back. Hallo. Kurze Frage, bevor wir den Vortrag starten. Ähm, Hände hoch bitte für äh, reine Only English Speakers. Raise your hands now, please. <lacht> All right. Two, three. Germans or Swiss Germans. All right. So. Five people in English, so English or German? Your choice. <lacht> Um, do the English speakers understand German? So, so? Shaky. <laughs> yeah. Then. All right. Then let's, let's do, do it in, it in English. English. All right. Absolutely. So, then for the native speakers, mm. forgive us if, if our English is not as good as yours. Sorry. Um, so methods <laughs> kill. Innovation. That's what we want to talk to, uh, today about. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are Anna and Robert from TINM. So, just to give you a little background of ours, um, I'm Robert, I'm basically from Berlin. Um, I've been there for the past 10 years and worked for two agencies and built up creation teams there. And we mainly work for startups and big corporates. Um, after that, I went to BCG Digital Ventures, which uh, is basically a company builder. So we build startups, innovative startups for big corporates. So also there, cultural shift was uh, one of the main issues there. And uh, enough about me. Anna. Thank you. So my name is Anna. A few words about me. I am actually a psychologist trapped in the IT world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not the only one. Spent the last two, three years in management consulting, in insurance, and right now I'm doing agile projects with TI and M. Happy to he be here and welcome everyone also from my side. All right. So. I think the uh, the morning was uh, enough academic, so this talk will be a bit more like fluent and more soft if we're talking topic-wise. But before we deep dive into our presentation, we want to basically ask, ask you uh, whether you would agree with our statement. And um, to do this, I would just need to put out my mobile phone and switch the presentation. Fingers crossed that it works. Switch to questions. All right. So we would like to ask you to get out your mobile phone, go on slido.com, and type in LASX. <laughs> Should we do it again? All right. And there you see the question like methods kill innovation. Would you agree? Yes, amen, or no? Butch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 14, 15, 16, counting. You, re you, re you really want to get to 50 50, right? <laughs> Someone is um, having fun here. <laughs> All right. OK, so approximately 60-40. So good that we are not the <laughs> only ones with that statement. All right, hopefully you're switching back to the presentation. So 60-40. All right. In the end, you know that this is a catchy headline in order to get you into this room. Um, <laughs> well, right? Um, but what we want to talk about today is, can you just this damn remote control? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, is that we value culture over methods. Um, and we thought this unicorn might be um, a good visualization of our statement. Why? Because if we are talking about innovation, you, you are talking about the rising stars, about unicorns, and, well, this is a unicorn. Pretty. Well, it seems like one, right? I mean, it has crazy teeth and uh, is a bit taped and a bit bold and not like shiny and colorful. Still, though, maybe an MVP version of a unicorn. <laughs> and that's what we consider basically as innovation. And in order to get to innovative uh, things and products, <laughs> we believe that this kind of MVP unicorn behavior needs 
more cultural values than methods, and this is what our talk is going to be about. Give you a short uh, sum up about what we are planning for the next one hour. Anna will give you a short introduction on uh, methods and frameworks. No worries, you're pretty familiar with that. Um, some innovation and success stories uh, where innovation happened beyond or maybe before methods. And then the main part of our talk, which will be which five values that we identified in order to basically drive innovation. And then some Q&A uh, session before we basically get into the nice networking again. All right? Good. Anna. Thank you. So before I deep dive into one specific method, I would like to present you a definition of methods and frameworks from a dictionary. From the Cambridge Dictionary that says, a method is a particular way of doing something. And the framework is a system of rules, ideas or beliefs that is used to plan or decide something. So that made me think a particular way of doing something. Sounds easy. We all know technologies change. Businesses change, market change, the way we work change. Some, something seems to stay the same, and that's the need for structure. We are asking for methods, frameworks, and methodologies. So it doesn't matter if um, I'm a huge fan of waterfall methods or agile methodologies or any other fancy method out there. At the end, I want to hear a best practice, have an instruction, and be structured um, in my daily business. Where we find our structure, or in TI and M, we find the structure throughout multiple approaches. That's it, the structure that we, um, that, give, that gives us a common ground, are the basic principles of Agile and Lean. But also, as you can see here, in this circle, throughout every single approach, we find that the common ground of working together, the build, measure, learn circle. So away from the, the daily business, away from the offices, why do we need methods and frame, frameworks? We need methods and frame, frameworks to have structure. To simply have structure, when I cook a new recipe, I would like to know what ingredients do I need, how much do I need of, of them, what comes together first, and of course, at the very end, I need to have someone who is also trying my meal and giving me honest feedback, hopefully, that they like my meal. We need methods and frameworks to have guidelines and boundaries. Simple as that, on a soccer field, it's quite obvious where the boundaries are and what the rules are. But also important, how to break the rules and how to take advantage of it. We need methods and frameworks to set conditions. Before every single concert, people do sound checks. They want to know what the conditions in the room is in order to have a great um, concert. We need methods and frameworks to implement rules and rituals. Simple example, when um, we work in our company in Scrum, and sometimes it happens that I sit together with people that I've never worked before. One thing that I know for sure is I will see these people every day in the daily stand-up I will have a planning, we will do a retro together, there will be certain rituals that will help structure our daily work. And that's amazing. So we need methods and frameworks to continuously improve. With continuous improvement, I'm not talking about the logo that has changed over the past 20 years, even though maybe Robert, from the design perspective, you would disagree. I'm I'm, t I'm talking about continuously improve um, with the products for the user, like Google, starting with a search engine, 
and ending up being at least at my biggest technology life partner on earth. I use Google for everything. We need um, methods and frameworks to develop values. Values is a big word and I don't need to do a PhD to explain you all what values are. We're experienced, we are experiencing them on our daily business. Um, sometimes four simple sentences, as you can see here from the Agile Manifesto, are enough to have a common ground to work together. They have more impact than um, you can imagine. We need methods and frameworks to work transparently. For example, hanging a scrum board where everyone in the team sees who is working on what topic. Besides having a transparent platform for everyone, where it's obvious um, where the people are working right now, the feeling of putting one story to the done column is just amazing. It also gives room to be proud that you're done with a um, certain task. And the last one, we need methods and frameworks to compete in the market. Yes. Lego has been and is the number one toy on the market. Great product for adults and children. Um, but that's not enough. They also improve in order to stay the best in the market. So in the past four years, they have used a um, framework to restructure the entire company and be ready for the future. That as an example how to compete and stay in the market. So, back to my initial question and back from the journey. Why do we need methods and frameworks exactly in order to, ha to have all the points that I've just mentioned? Yes, methods structure our daily, daily work and we can't imagine working without them. But boundaries evolve at the same time. With the methods, boundaries evolve at the same time. Boundaries. I'm not talking about physical boundaries sometimes, maybe, but boundaries, I'm, I'm thinking about mental boundaries. Mental boundaries, like you can see here um, in this example, a little closer. So, a lot of um, my friends or peers are trying to change the world. They have great ideas, they want to open up a startup would sit together, maybe book the Impact Hub in Zurich, gather one night and collect all the ideas that they have. What I actually observed is they would pull out a business model canvas. Great, great tool to collect ideas and to structure them in a way that um, a business needs in order to be successful. That made me think, first, doesn't it tunnel the ideas on an early stage and doesn't also with the given borders that you can see already decides which part is more or less important. Wouldn't a post-it storm like that give more room for ideas? Even, I agree, they're not as structured and on the, as on the right hand side, but wouldn't that create more room for ideas and be more innovative? And I want to leave this question open and asking more questions, saying how to make a shift from having a structured way and being innovative, how to use the methods in a way to have both, how to trigger one or the other side. This brings me to the conclusion, yes, we need agile methods in order to develop amazing products. There, they help us on a daily business and we cannot imagine working without them. But innovation doesn't come for free with the methods. Just because I use one method doesn't guarantee me that I'll have an innovative product out there and that I'll succeed. That's why I want to stick to our um, primarily statement, methods even kill innovation. So enough about methods and frameworks, Robert um, 
Please tell us more about the success stories from the innovation side. All right. <laughs> Enough of boring theory, coming to real world examples. <laughs> boring? <laughs> nah, I'm sorry. Way, way more important than what I'm talking about. All right. So <laughs> of course, of course. Innovation and success stories. So let, let's talk about, I mean, what, what I just described is methods and frameworks are essential as hell. And it's not about that we just get rid of the one or the other, as on the Asia Manifesto, it's that we just rate the other one um, higher than the other. And so I want to, I think everybody knows Peter Drucker most probably, innovation is more than a new method, so that's something that he used to say. And this example is one of those where you could u most probably have used almost every method in the world and wouldn't have led to this product. So this is a wall cleaner and it came from the times when we had ovens in our living room. And so they were producing dust as hell. And what you would do is take this product, go to your wall and get the dust from the wall. Just remove it. So dust remover. Um, unfortunately, or for us fortunately, um, the world has changed. And now we have like good heating systems in our living rooms. So for this company, the market broke away. No market anymore. No target group anymore. So what to do? What to do with his responsibility? And then did he, did he take out a business model canvas saying like, okay, where can I use it? No. Um, he basically went out in the world being brave, being playful, and basically observed. And when he almost had any, uh, didn't get any idea anymore, he was taken just to the kindergarten where his wife was working, and the kids instantly started playing with it. No methods led him there. It's like the pure instinct and the, the way of, I, I, I want to still change something, I want to have a product on the market that, that is good and basically maybe also creates fun and has some kind of reason. And then after identifying there might be a new market, then he went into build, measure, learn in order to get rid of all the toxic, in order to um, get this to, to the Play-Doh as we know it as of today. And also for kids, obviously, adding colors. So it got to the product that we know as of today. Innovation happened somewhere else, and then it went to the uh, process and methodologies. Next up is a product that also everybody of you knows, and it started in a bakery. Um, they were producing really, really awesome cake. And um, basically, it was presented on plates, and those plates from the bakery, Frisbees, were looking like this. So you already know where this goes, right? <laughs> After Pi was over, they were throwing away those uh, uh, things, and basically kids were taking them and throwing them simply around. And one smart guy, smart ass as you could say, was basically just simply observing it and saying, well, okay, there might be a chance. And uh, then he also again went into that build, measure, learn, uh, in order to basically make this the device as we know it today. So you see also there, like there is a whole evolution until the, we got the Frisbee as we know it. Another example that is pretty more disruptive maybe, um, everybody knows it, right? Um, disrupting the hotel industry by basically bringing together private people. And it started basically with couch surfing, right? It's not like there, there was one guy who said, okay, I fill a business out of business model canvas in order to basically uh, get to one of the biggest platforms in the world. It constantly evolved after as he saw that there might be um, some market. But again, the idea of connecting people in order to, to save money is something that happened before. And another example, as, as you know, every, I mean, you know all the, the Googles and the Amazons and the Spotify's, and basically it's about the same thing, right? It's like thinking outside of the box, 
ignoring limits and basically think of how can we basically change all the behavior. Let's play back some time, right? When we went out and basically um, we're lending our uh, video cassettes, right? Our VHS. I mean, simple first step of digitization was pretty simple. We are doing the same approach, but only on digital. So, ah, there is a movie, I go to some online platform, I lend it and I pay it and then return it, basically. I mean, that was the first one, right? <laughs> you, you basically physically got the CDs and then you physically would send them back to get the then digital and then saying, well, let's change the system because I basically want to have that on demand all the time and to almost every song out there, if you uh, consider Spotify or almost every movie or series, um, if you consider Netflix. It's that innovative moment where somebody thinks further. And we were taking those um, examples and basically thinking about what's the message behind that? And how can we basically adapt that to our daily work? And um, so again, Drucker, because I really love that guy, in the end, the bottom line is the same. It's about like cultural values are way more important than uh, something you would either call strategy or also methods and frameworks. Um, because they are relevant. And ob obviously, you need to fill out a business model canvas somewhere in time in order to, to have a viable product. But innovation happens somewhere, somewhere differently. Enough talking. Now we're coming to like what values we basically got from these examples and how we basically embody those values in our daily work. And to just give you some insights of how we structure digital product development, this is uh, how we basically tackle development in or at TNM in three ways basically. It's an innovation phase, development until going live or beta testing, and then scaling on the market, which is the same mindset, but with real users and real uh, analytics. And for now, as we're talking as on innovation, it's about ideation as well as validation. So we're talking mainly about this first phase. And again, since we value culture over methods, the things that you will see now are those five values that we identified. And we want to talk about how we stuff teams. So we will have a look that a team that will look for innovative ideas for our clients embodies those values. So what are those? Number one, we want that everybody in our company enjoys diversity. is playful, things beyond limits. We want to have a culture where we value impact over words. And where we still have something, how, how did you call that uh, today? That reflective moment of being smart. So the, the first three will be um, talk to you from Anna. And I will, I will do the finish line then. Thank you. So the first value um, I would like to introduce you is enjoy diversity. That's actually my favorite val uh, value because that's the way I am building my path. As I mentioned before, I studied psychology and there were multiple moments during my studies where I was sitting in the room thinking, oh, we are all the same. I'm sitting in a room with same mindset, same approaches, um, mostly women, and also sometimes same political opinions. How is that possible? That's why I said, no, enough. I need to go out in the industry and work with people who have a different background. Why? Because the more diverse, the better. I enjoy the diverse colors and the contrast that diversity gives and brings. And simply, when you take diverse people together, new ideas evolve and develop in a completely other way. 
that it's not um, foreseeable. If we talk about diversity, we see diversity on two levels. On one hand, diverse teams with multiple diverse factors, but also the way we look at products with diverse lenses. So the way we look on products is, um, of course, on one hand, for the users, we want to build something that the customers out there want. Then we want to build something that is feasible, that survives in the market, and where we can also leverage the power of our product that we are launching. That's the diverse approach we are looking on products. And now to give you a closer example, what we did at TINM, where I think that reflects the value and joy diversity the most, is an app where we develop with PostFinance, and um, we build an app that recognizes Schweizerdeutsch, so Swiss German. We, ha we are a diverse country, especially in terms of languages. We speak four languages with multiple dialects, and everyone speaks it differently as well. So why not embracing that and considering it while developing a product? And during that process, we've also noticed, hey, we could also use the voice for the authentication. After having the fingerprint and the face recognition, let's use the voice as well. And that allowed us at the end to do basic um, banking transactions with the mother tongue that we grew up with. The second value that I would like to present is go beyond limits. I'm sure you have all heard that before, nothing new in that perspective. But the way we see Go Beyond Limits is especially um, the, the, that you're um, brave enough to make a step towards an unknown zone. Go Beyond Limits means doing something that not 10,000 people have done before and there are millions of um, Google results how to do a particular thing. It's go beyond limits, be brave enough to be in this unknown zone and creating something that you have never done with a team in that way. Again, I would like to show you a result of TI and M. Everyone talks about blockchain, we did something on blockchain. The first digital identity, where of course we went beyond our limits and where I saw the team embracing the value the most. So on to the third one, be smart, is a value that sounds easy, but is in my opinion the most difficult one. It is wonderful when you have teams and companies that have all the knowledge, all the methods, all the innovati innovative heads together and that, that can create great stuff. But at the end, you have to be smart about reflecting it and knowing when to use which strength and when. Knowing who are the clients and who is the company and how can that collaborate. So it's great to have um, have all that source in one company. But again, being reflective and use it in a certain way, it's even more important. Be smart in terms of be smart when developing products. Um, I'd like to introduce you to this online um, onboarding that we did as a product in our company. And there you can imagine um, digital onboarding in banking, insurances, and other industries are pretty much regulated. There, there's not much room for new ideas. You have to stick to the rules and implement that. So yes, do it, be smart about it, and do it, ri that, do it right that the contract at the end ends up correctly with all the security and compliance issues that come with it. But be smart, also implementing some fun facts, some emotions at the beginning, at the end, and also some easy handable tools for the user, the, the users that they can actually have fun when entering into a new bank. 
that's a product where I saw being smart really was a challenge and worked out pretty well. So, the next ones, I'll give over to Robert. Thanks. Yeah. And now you also see that uh, basically all those values will basically also cross-link. Um, so impact of words. Um, I will not do the Switzerland example here. Um, you can probably read. It's about delivery. And it's about delivery in the earliest possible stage. So the faster you try, the earlier you will learn. And even though we embrace diversity and we embrace uh, discussions in order to open our, uh, up our minds, in order to basically get rid of um, all the um, limits out there, communication still, though, has a potential for misunderstanding. So if I'm talking about something, uh, you could basically have many interpretations. But the simplest thing to basically get ideas, visuals, scribble them down on paper is something that basically has less room for interpretation, right? So, in the end, done is better than perfect, and also about like what would you prioritize higher? We basically rate solutions over problems. Again, diversity, cross-linking, perfect. You would want to have like people who are showing off problems, but you would also want to basically rate the solutions higher. And Talking about like impact over words and delivery and doing something, I want to show you basically two examples how we embody that. And those are our code camp. We basically uh, take the whole team uh, to the mountains and basically do a hackathon session where we give one current topic that might be AI, that might be blockchain, whatsoever, and basically create something um, which is just simple about delivery. And the second one is Hack an App, where we basically invite that damn remote control. Where we basically invite kids from school to get theory as well as practice of programming. Because we believe that's one of the most um, wanted things they need for the future in order to basically solve problems. And you wouldn't basically want to teach kids by only theory the, um, um, the skills of coding, but rather than doing, right? And for me, the most, most, most important value if we talk about innovation is being playful. Why is that? Um, because only if you have fun at work, and if you really put some love into your work, you will create fun for users. So, always keep your eyes open, do research, and, and basically go with passion to your work, because otherwise you will not create that magic moments for your users. So, heart over brain, follow those passions. If you have something that that you feel that is the right track, don't don't get get uh, just. Feel going, 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 going. And if you keep going, you will create something. That is not a simple login screen. I mean, just, that's just a tiny, small animation which, which, which makes a simple, boring login screen a bit more emotional. And now that we've introduced uh, Skrubli uh, to our client, she is now a big star there. I mean, they, they, they are, <laughs> seriously, they, they, they are printing stickers, attaching it to cars, put it into uh, to all the Migrunius stores out there. Why? Because it creates emotion. And that can be only done if you and yourself have fun at work. Summing up, five values that we basically embody and try to really live every day. Having a diverse team in terms of everything that you could imagine of diversity. 
people that are having focus on problems, but also people that are loving the solutions more. Having <laughs> Having a diverse team in, in all kind of manners, may it be um, the side of um, content, may it be the side of culture. Second of be playful, I hope this sticks after this presentation. Um, go beyond limits. Because otherwise something as um, Plato would not have happened. Impact other words. Go into early delivery instead of um, talking, 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 as I do currently. <laughs> <laughs> and be smart enough to know when to stop talking, as I do now. <laughs> but again, summing up, this is basically how we stuff teams. Valuing culture over methods. And as I said, it's about the delivery. And the unicorn mustn't be the, the most beautiful unicorn you've ever seen. Nevertheless, an MVP unicorn is also something that is valuable. And that's why we value culture over methods. And pretty good in terms of time, uh, which is perfect, leads more room for an open discussion. Anybody questions? Seriously, was that boring? Uh, how diverse are your teams? I mean, do you have kind of a, of a key, like uh, we need a, in, a group, in a group of 10 people, we need uh, two women, um, then we need um, a coder, then we need also one from the business department. Uh, how, how do you um, organize your diversity? Yeah. So let's talk about, I mean, this is also a theory, right? And this is what we try to reach on a daily basis. In the end, um, if we basically sell something, then we have like uh, the challenge of like whom to pit now. And then we're we'll talking about the real world problems, right? Um, nevertheless, for, for a development company as we are, um, the quote of women is pretty high. I would say also for the Swiss market. We have a lot of uh, people from different cultures and um, we basically have a lot of people coming from different backgrounds. I mean, we got agile consultants coming from uh, psychology. Basically, I'm a designer um, and my history is I'm a, I used to be a lawyer's assistant. Um, seriously, we will always have, have a look on who is available and then uh, try to stuff as it is basically good for that uh, request. Yeah. But we are really, really diverse. Does it somehow answer your question? Thank you. Thank you. Everybody's so tired. <laughs> More questions? Is time a limit uh, when you put your ideas? You have to think, okay, we have to, we have 20 or 24 hours, or you just say, okay, until we get something interesting, we will work for you. Will yeah. be time. Okay. You or me? So first of all, the question for, for everybody was like whether we put time as a limit uh, in order cre to create innovation. Kind of right. You or me? I think um, our approach is to have it time boxed. Of course, I mean, there is no time limit for innovation in theory. Um, but our approach is to do, we do garages with them um, in little teams, in interdisciplinary teams, we have, where we have a time box um, agenda and do one after the other thing and trigger the innovative part from multiple uh, aspects. And we have to do it, of course, an eye on time. Yeah. Well, I don't. You would. Yeah. Would you yeah. agree? 
Totally, totally. Uh, since we also need to have a have a, have a focus on budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's true. I, I believe the same. So, uh, first of all, speaking for designers, um, we tend to basically also some kind of overcreate something, right? Give us the right amount of time, and this won't be an MVP unicorn anymore, right? It would be sparkling and colorful and li like animated and everything. But it might turn out that it doesn't solve the problem or we don't ask ourselves what is the current challenge that we are going to take. Um, so if we simply limit the time, we will focus on what comes first. And by doing so, we will also keep an eye on the budget that basically our client gives us. And uh, most of the time, uh, clients also consult us when uh, they basically say, ah, oh, wow, there is a timeline in six months from now, um, and we got that huge reorganizational problem as well as basically want to launch a new e-banking. So you got six months. Well, then find some creative ways to basically uh, get this thing uh, sorted. And then you really start thinking about, okay, what kind of team do I need? Are we really forcing the, the right questions? And then start agile development in terms of, okay, what are the phases that we basically can do? What is a kind of MVP unicorn in terms of um, online banking? And is it good enough to basically also put that at the market? Does it somehow answer your question? Thank you. Good, thank you. How, uh, how long does the team stay together? They stay together all the time or just mixing all the time? I need you, 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 build the team, okay, we finished, next um, uh, comes in, okay, we need another team, we need you. Yeah. Yes, I would say it definitely depends on the project, but um, also talking about enjoy diversity, meaning mixed experiences and learn from each other. So yes, it can happen that you're on a project for a year, but ideally, and we always have the possibility to um, switch the projects as well, and we would normally do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just imagine there is like that MVP of an online banking solution. Then you as a designer or a developer would work on that for, I don't know, let's say eight to 10 months, right? And then you're in that production mode, like, okay, every feature, you, you know, you get into that build measure learn, all right, okay, we will evaluate every feature, uh, but you're like in there, right? And it's about like uh, the German expression is like den Wald vor den lauter Bäumen nicht mehr sehen. So so you don't see the forest uh, anymore due to the trees. Um, and this is what we want to avoid. There is so many knowledge on on almost every team, and at least starting to do hallway tests with people who didn't use that uh, service before opens our eyes again. And to get stuffed on a new project also gets you out of, of this hamsterrad, I don't know what the English expression is for that, but <laughs> which also leads to the way that you would also have more passion on the, on the next job that you perform. Mm -hmm. Do you think that today's tools, remote collaboration, is uh, nearly as effective as people in the same room? I have a clear opinion on yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, let's talk for the company. <laughs> um, well, we, we got a more or less strict um, no, how would you say it? Um, no policy. home office policy. Why is that? Um, you could argue now in the one or the other direction. We believe that personal contact and pers uh, personal discussions in order to also draw down ideas, um, in order to, to see what, what, what is there, um, is something that is more valuable than uh, trying to arrange uh, time. Nevertheless, we had got liquid working, so everybody could basically switch from 100 to 80% uh, on, on a monthly basis. And if there is a case such like the kids are ill or whatsoever, we enable them to, to do home office. But our primary focus, that is what we value more, is like direct communication. Yeah, definitely, I, I agree. And what I also observe is, especially when designers work together with developer, with business analysts, of course, you can do this remote as well. 
but it's so much quicker to finger point the, um, the single issues, to draw something real quick, to draw the concept or the logic and have it all in one place. It's simply easier, but it also works the other way, of course. Yeah. I would also say it's more fun, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we will come soon to the fun part. Uh, you talked a lot about methods and innovation. Yeah. I somehow missed the third ingredient, perhaps the client. I mean, the end user, you know, the, the one who actually yeah. gets something from the innovation. Yeah. Uh, you, you probably just didn't say so much about the client. But uh, if you take the example of online banking, how did you involve the client, the end user, to actually make an innovative product? Yeah. Short answer. Did everybody get the question? Like, how to involve the client, the end user, in order to create an innovative product? Answer, at the earliest possible stage. And of course, methods help us there. Do some quantitative surveys, do some, yep. well, use the UEQ, whatsoever, right? Um, that's something that we, we need, and that's what we also want to say. Methods and methodologies and frameworks are essential to us, essential. Just for, for, for the innovative part, we just value the other uh, thing more. Um, and yes, use this feedback on a constant basis. Otherwise, we couldn't do that build, measure, learn circle, right? Um, is so important to us, especially as designers. Because, I mean, everybody knows the situation. You are in a meeting room with your client, uh, and then he's like, okay, first of all, we got a briefing. We know what to do, right? I mean, problem statements all clear, blah, blah, blah. Uh, here is a list of requirements. Well, yeah. Okay, list of requirements doesn't lead to something which is like the desire of a user. Second, um, five designers in a room might be a good idea, gives you 10 opinions. Um, <laughs> true. Um, we, we, we simply basically also challenge ourselves every day um, and get the simple opinion um, of the user um, in, and then in two perspectives. Perspective number one is, do we basically hit his desires? And second, does he understand our service? Hmm. Can I follow up? Uh, yeah. What did you do exactly? I mean, I know the, the principles mm -hmm. you have involved yeah. in the client, but uh, if you take now the online banking example, yeah. take different product, product yeah. uh, how, may, how often do you get in touch with the client? On what opportunities? Are, how do you pick the clients? Or how do they get to you? Yeah. That's, that's what I'm interested in. Yeah. Depending on the, on the budget of the, the client in the end, right? Yeah. Um, we, we are selling um, user tests and the importance of them still hard on the market uh, from time to time, but uh, <laughs> if I had a wish, I would do those user tests on a qualitative way, so interviews or a quantitative way, every freaking sprint. Reality, every two to three sprints. Yeah. Somehow. That being said, I, I've also experienced even um, while preparing for an offering, we would call up people in the industry and do a quick interview about the topic. Hey, how do you experience that process? Um, what are the pain points that you can share with us over the phone? So we do it pretty simple. Of course, we have it also structured when we have time to do it right, but um, especially when it goes to a topic end to end. But we also do, like you've mentioned, quick hallway tests. Um, we plan for every sprint enough room for user tests and that we can also prioritize and change the requirements with every sprint. If that's possible regarding the budget and everything, absolutely. But as I said, um, my experience so far was I, I was surprised how much actually we involved the user, so yeah. I was pretty happy about that. Also, of course, um, knowing the user and producing something that the user wants motivates me yeah. personally the most. Yeah. Yeah. And also there we got some experts in the design team who are basically doing this on a kind of everyday basis, uh, a daily basis. Um, also like psychologists uh, from the background, but also coming from diverse um, backgrounds. Um, it's essential to us because otherwise we would just have that five opinions in the room. Does it 
answer your question, or you want to go deeper, like in which <laughs> kind of methods do we use then? Uh, okay. okay. You rate culture over methods, but um, how does culture look like? How is your company culture? What is the essence of your company culture? The essence? Yes. What, 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 is, what are the main three pillars or five pillars of your company culture? How do you cultivate that? Um, we like meaning from a vision perspective, from a mission perspective, or like the the values that we just talked about. Are these five the values? These are your basic five. Well, this is what we what we get on a daily basis. Like this is how we stuff teams, and obviously you have a big bigger picture, which is more on a mission, right? We want to be the number one consultancy and uh, development in Switzerland and want to basically also be that in Europe. I mean, you need to have some kind of vision. And then, since our CEO is basically coming from uh, water sports and skiing, we, we try to basically get this on, onto almost every kind of metaphor that we are using. That's why we also have that, uh, in the end, bluish slides, because it reflects like water and reflection, right? But it's, it's like uh, what we do, like, example, Shake the Lake is one of our main events each and every year. We invite all of our colleagues, as well as our clients, to go to the um, Zurich Lake and basically go for water sports. Because there it's also about agility, right? Because if you're not agile, you would basically go beyond the water. And th this is something w which we also have fundamentally in each and every basically shout-out that we will public. So kind, kind of answer your question, right? I mean, how, how, def how to define cultural values, uh, that, that's big, right? That's really, really big. In the end, if I would describe the um, culture at TNM, we're a bunch of pretty diverse people with lots of backgrounds and the desire to basically change something in terms of digital products. And we, we are somehow digitally nerds, we, and we have people in the company there way beyond 50. They are li like still burning for technology and for, for the also some kind of, I mean, for me it's to drive, but security, which is a big, big issue, right? And we got people who, who can, can really go into that very, very uh, deep thing. And, and that kind of diversity is something where we could basically or are learning every day. And that is something that, that gives me a smile while talking about it.